And um, so we'll start out with um, nav navigation tools, of course. The zoom in is zoom out are fairly uh, expl explanatory. Uh, zoom in, though, I just like to mention that if you want to zoom into a set uh, a set uh, scale, you can zoom in on a box, and then you would just hit hold the left key, left mouse key down, and drag your box, and that would give you. Let me refresh this here so that uh, make sure it's working properly. So you can drag your box and create your uh, zoom box, and it'll zoom to the uh, largest extent of that box. Um, you cannot do that in a zoom out uh, tool. And then remember with the pan, the pan is you hold down the left mouse button and drag your map in the direction uh, that you want to view. Um, full view. Uh, full view for those in surety is, is based on uh, what you had set as your view uh, option. Uh, we'll look at that. Uh, full view in, in surety Pro is also uh, when you log in or if you have no client selected is based on what you have set uh, for your um, view area. Um, but it also, when you have a client selected in Surety Pro, it, it is based on your client extent. To set that view area, you, it is under Tools, Options, Options Page. That's the very first option. The startup page. So what you do is click on the box that is right there. It'll come up and say your startup view has been set. And then that's all you have to do. You don't have to hit save. You just cancel out of there. And it'll, be, it'll set it based on what you have on the screen. So what you want to do is set up your area and then go and do that. So now every time um, you log in initially, or if you hit full view without the client, or you clear the client, that is the view that will be on your map page. And, and then previous view, of course, is a history of views. Uh, as you click that, continually it goes back one view at a time. So very handy if you uh, get to an area and then you move your map and then you realize that you want to get back to that same area. Just hit the previous view and it'll take you there. Next we're going to look at some of the search tools real quick. Um, over here on the lower uh, right panel you have our search uh, sharing uh, Search tools shares the same panel as your layers and parcel data, parcel information. So uh, you click on search. Again, we have the five search uh, tabs. First is legal, uh, state is required, and then your section, township range. Make sure you put in the right uh, directions for your township and range. And hit locate, and we'll zoom to that section. Uh, lat long, of course, you can type in lat long. You can either type it in. Uh, decimal seconds, as you see here, uh, decimal minutes, or decimal degrees. Both latitude and longitude must have the same format uh, when typing in. Uh, currently, you can type the negative sign in, uh, but we don't require it because uh, we assume, uh, since our mapping program is working in North America, we assume uh, a negative longitude. And then you can also place a symbol there. Uh, township uh, refers to the name. You type, uh, you pick a state, and uh, you just start typing in a uh, name. And uh, as you type in, it'll start to give you a list also. And once you have uh, s uh, typed in, oops, excuse me, you can then put in a section and then hit locate. Now the address, um, address allows you to zoom to a state, it allows you to zoom to a city. Uh, you could put a street in there and zoom to that street and it'll give you uh, sections of that street. And then of course you put a house number in and locate it, it will locate an address for you. 
Uh, we also, in the address, have the county search. So if you want to search to an individual county, you can do that uh, here, and it's based on the state that you have selected up here. And of course, Texas, we have the Texas Land Survey with the block and sections uh, for you to search with. <clears throat> uh, one thing, uh, we'll look at some of the options here again. Um, we want to mention under options page. Um, for those of you, um, if you ever um, uh, build a form and you do not see uh, uh, the options on the right side of the form for uh, things such as um, saving um, uh, map options, things of that nature, you probably have your maps built directly to a PDF. Uh, and that's fine, you can do that. I recommend uh, selecting print maps from a web page. What that does is open up another uh, tab or web page and then gives you the options of, of you can save it then as a PDF at that point, and, but it gives you all the other options available to you to work on that form. And I'll mention the, what, what, we're, what I'm talking about here when we look at the forms. Um, <clears throat> and then the lat latitude longitude display, uh, this refers to this in the bottom left of your mapping window and then you say what you want what uh, format you want <clears throat> and then I would recommend keeping this <coughs> excuse me this option checked if you don't have a check I would uh, I would recommend checking it so that if you're drawing or selecting a field and you zoom uh, you know it can accidentally hit your scroll scroll button or something or on a touchpad um, uh, move the map or something <clears throat> you will lose your um, select and drawn field so <clears throat> I would leave this uh, checked here and then if you've made any changes to any of these options from the printing options on down you would have to hit save uh, the startup view does not require the save button so uh, let's move on um, for those in Surety Pro, if you're not done so already, you would create the 2018 crop here, and then you'll have something called roll, roll borders, and it allows you to roll uh, your boundaries from uh, the previous year into the new year. Uh, you can do it just for a selected client, or you can do it for all clients. And you can also have the option, if, if you have some forms with no boundaries, you could roll those boundary, uh, form boundaries into the new uh, year also. So uh, that's Surety Pro option. Again, a lot. Of, let's look at some of the select and drawing tools real quick, um, and then we'll go over the save boundaries uh, for uh, Surety, Por, uh, Surety Pro, and then the import boundaries. Um, so if you need to get in real quick, um, uh, select a um, select a field. Of course, we have the FSA fields, um, or get in draw. You can use the select button quickly pick a uh, boundary and then as you pick a boundary you'll be able to go in and pick your form uh, so those in surety will also get the forms listed along with the uh, maps you can go in and create those uh, quickly um, those in surety pro you would first uh, choose a client and either you will choose uh, from existing boundaries by a farm or a field ID <clears throat> to select or if you're starting from new and you're just going to be adding a boundary first you must uh, either select a client or add a client to the uh, edit clients database and then you'll be able to go in and, and select now you'll be able then to see all the forms available. Um, you can create a form without saving it in Surety Pro. It would be saved under the client. Or you can uh, save a border. Uh, so if you select this border and you did some editing on it, you'd be able to save that border underneath that client. We will go through that shortly. Also you could uh, draw a boundary of course. Uh, we'll turn off our FSA fields here and you could uh, 
come into drawing and this is the same for uh, surety users also surety users of course you wouldn't need to worry about a client uh, so you can go in and, and draw your field um, and start working on that so uh, one little thing on drawing here if you notice that it, the red line is your drawing tool Um, what you can do is uh, you notice that the minor roads are also red. Uh, so my recommendation is to go into your layers, into other, and and you can turn those off uh, as you draw for drawing, and they won't interfere. You can see we removed the red lines. Now if you come back into drawing, um, you start drawing. Now that's the only red line you see. So we'll draw this field here quickly. And of course, uh, you have two options of closing this field, either clicking over the existing point or do a double click on your last vertice. Um, so that's a drawing feature. Um, make sure in Surety Pro, again, before you start drawing, you have a client selected. Uh, if you do draw and uh, then have to select a client, the boundary will disappear and you have to start over. Um, you can, of course, edit. Uh, we'll quickly go through some of these edit tools here. Uh, to move a node or vertice, you just hover your mouse over it, cliff, click, and hold, and you can drag that vertice. Uh, if you want to add a node or vertice, you either right click in uh, where you want to add it or along the line it will snap to that and then you can move it or adjust it uh, to delete to delete a vertice or a node you, know, you will click over the one you want to delete and drag it over a nearby and you see it gets absorbed into it and then when you let go uh, you have deleted those nodes so that's how you can uh, <clears throat> uh, delete a um, a node uh, and of course you can draw um, you can draw as you can draw as you um, draw pan excuse me pan as you draw to take, take advantage of the resolution of the images so you zoom in uh, you don't have to zoom in to the extent of the field you could zoom in even a little closer uh, start drawing and then when you get to the edge all you would do is left click and hold and say left click to create the node you left click and hold and now you're able to drag the map window and then let go it'll refresh and you can keep drawing uh, so a very convenient way of drawing take advantage of higher resolution images to get as most as accurate as possible uh, with your uh, boundary itself so keep that in mind a good tool uh, to use and you can zoom in and out also as you're drawing if you have a scroll uh, button and we'll finish this one up here we won't worry about the poles here in the field for today and so on okay so we've drawn that boundary. Now in, in surety, you could just go in and do your maps and your forms. Um, you don't have to worry about the client. Uh, you can go in and do that. Surety Pro, you can also do that without saving. Now if you want to save this boundary within uh, Surety Pro, you would uh, just, after you're done editing, just hit Save Borders. If you haven't saved borders since we've changed this, it, it used to be a two-step process. Now it's a single step. You would just hit Save Borders. It will come up and allow you to enter or select a farm name and then uh, enter or select a field ID. And so you would just, uh, you, could, you don't need a farm name if you don't want uh, wish. Uh, you don't actually need a field ID if you don't uh, wish but it would uh, get kind of confusing on that um, but uh, you can, again you can set a new farm or select an existing one and you give a, a, a 
field ID, hit save, and now you are done. Uh, you don't now have to go into edit borders to do that. So now your uh, field is part of that client, the Security Pro option here. Um, edit a border. Now uh, that's the edit borders is just the edit, uh, uh, edit borders is just for editing now. So you would select your border either by the drop down list or using the select tool. And then you would come in and edit border. And then you'll see the name. So you could either change it to a different farm, add a new farm name, change the field ID uh, if you wish and save it, or just hit delete. And that would delete the uh, border from the system for those in Surety Pro. Uh, if you have existing uh, FSA boundary or an existing border, or maybe a sensitive area you've created, a custom layer. Um, we use the Smart Select tool. Remember that allows you to put whatever you select directly into the edit mode. So if we're looking at the FSA fields, you select the FSA field, it'll automatically go into edit mode. You can make your changes there, do your maps and forms, or if you're in Surety Pro, save it. Um, if you're working with a border, and uh, zoom to that border. Let me turn the forms off here. Um, it's selected already, but if you hit the Smart Select uh, and click again, it will allow you to edit that field and make changes. So Smart Select uh, allows you to directly edit. And then when you're done in Surety Pro, if you've done the Smart Select, you would just hit Save Border, and uh, you are fine. You're ready to go. So that's a quick review on the drawing tools. We won't go through the drawing tools. Uh, um, we'll show you how you can look up those drawing tools. We have a very good uh, web page for that. They can take you through all the web um, drawing tools verbally and through videos. Um, again, in uh, Surety Pro, um, we're going to import uh, borders. Uh, so you can import borders into the system. Um, so uh, either KMLs or shape files, more likely would be uh, shape files, maybe from another system. Uh, so the first thing you would do is pick or create the client that you're going to import into. Always important to select or, or create the client that you want to work with. And then we're going to go into File, Import, and then Borders. You know, come up with the Upload Borders dialog. Um, these are the different types you can import. Of course, shapefile, most common. You have to have uh, at least three of these four uh, files. Um, they can all be zipped together in a zip file. We can load that directly. Um, so what you would do is go in and choose your file. And it should take you on your computer uh, wherever you uh, have your files. And then uh, we can choose a zip file, which has all the individual files, or you could create, select the individual, all three individual files in this case. I'm going to select the zip file. Once that's selected, it'll show up here, or all the files you've selected shows up here. Uh, it can be a single field, or it can be a multiple field shape file. And then you hit Upload File. Next, it's going to ask you to associate attributes. So if that file you're uploading has a field name or field ID in it, you can associate that with the field ID in the surety system. And in this case, it does. It's called field name. Uh, you can also set the farm as farm name. Uh, you can pull in acres from that shape file, or if you leave it blank, uh, the surety pro program will calculate those acres for you. I'm going to leave that blank. I'm going to hit save. And it's going to come up dialog. It said it uploads 6 to the 14 for total acres of 714.1. Uh, now, these are, say, some of these borders already exist in the system. Uh, it's because I didn't clear them out. Um, so we're going to finish that. Uh, so if you have no borders existing in the system, you would have 14 of 14. But we're going to just work with that. So. Uh, these are the borders that were existing. I have added these borders here to my Illic Farms client. 
and I had where I had one farm before and now I have two farms and those borders and if you notice when I select the farm I select all boundaries under the farm if you if you farm so it might be a nice to, uh, way to have if you want to select all boundaries under farm uh, to put uh, those boundaries under your farm name so that's the import and then of course you can edit them at that point so let's talk about the layers now which, um, within the program so um, some there might be some new layers since maybe you last looked at the program but we're going to go through them here especially the important ones for production ag of course we got the FSA field boundaries um, uh, from uh, May of 2008 those are the yellow lines that you see on the map uh, of course you can turn those off and on by just unselecting them or selecting them um, uh, you can also um, uh, select those of course and use those boundaries next um, we're going to look at crop history I'm just going to, of course we're just going to go down the line here um, well, first let's look at a Surety Pro uh, layer, uh, unique to Surety Pro, and that's our borders. So if you have borders, do not show up until you select a client. Okay, once you select a client, the border layer becomes active, and you can turn that off and on. At this point, you cannot control the color or the attributing of the borders layer uh, at this time. Let's move on to the next um, layer. Um, let's talk about uh, crop history. Uh, crop history is available to everybody. Uh, you can uh, well, here's the different years. You can zoom to an area, look at crop history. Um, you can then hit the legend and I'll bring up a legend just for what's available in that screen mapping screen. Okay. Uh, so as you zoom out, the legend can come become pretty intense. So you might have to give it a moment or two to load that legend and of course we also have a um, a uh, crop history form and we'll look at that when we look at forms and maps actually it's a crop history map form so um, keep that in mind um, if you are using parcels this is where you would uh, turn on the parcel data next we have our forms uh, some of our form layers uh, we'll come back to this uh, in surety uh, you would have uh, uh, FA obstructions uh, would be one that's still available, uh, but uh, you would not have individual uh, um, forms layers. Uh, that's a Surety Pro feature because we can save those uh, forms within Surety Pro and assign them to the client. But if you do have uh, those, are where you would control those, and uh, you can also look at layer properties so anything that is blue in color and underline if you click on it you can look at the layer properties um, and we'll come back to the layer properties as we look at some of these forms uh, later on uh, I'm going to mention uh, drift watch uh, or field watch um, I didn't get the website here but uh, you can check this go to fieldwatch.org and um, search their uh, website uh, they're an organization that uh, if you're not familiar with them that uh, has um, gives the capability for people to enter things such as apiaries uh, sensitive crops uh, they work with some states uh, with the, some states on that um, they have a limited uh, state uh, number of states uh, in there but uh, they got the basically the Midwest the Plains uh, quite a few states uh, they just added South Dakota and Virginia uh, but it might be if you're in uh, any of the states that they serve it might be worthwhile looking at what they have its ability to turn on um, a sensitive uh, layer sensitive crops and B layer uh, for individual states let me zoom out here so here's Minnesota South Dakota uh, you see uh, you got uh, sensitive crops the brown in this case are the uh, 
apiaries. Uh, you can see they have them labeled. And, and so if you create, uh, so if you're applying in a, in a field here, a chemical application, of course, so more likely, uh, you can um, create a map and show where these are for your applicators and things of that nature. So uh, take a look at Driftwatch or fieldwatch.org, fieldwatch.org. If you want more information, you can sure give, give me a call or drop me an email. And that's available only in Surety Pro. Next, uh, if you have custom layers, you will see those here under more custom layers. Uh, we won't, we'll skip land sense for today. Um, that's uh, in log layers. Log layers refer to aerial only. And maybe hopefully someday we have ground unit as applied also in the system. Um, so let's move on. Let's look at orthophoto. Orthophoto are the background images. And depending on what state you're in, uh, you will uh, have uh, certain dates. So look, for example, uh, here's uh, we're in North Dakota. And there was one last year. And, and you can go back to previous years and turn those on. So there's 2009. You can also look at the dates. Uh, let's show the dates. So in that area, that photo, you can see a photo dates by just turning on photo dates. And you can see there's a photo date. Uh, there, uh, if we uh, pan over here and look, uh, you'll see that um, you have this line which shows you a merge of two photos, but they look like they were on the same date. Sometimes you might have two different dates here, and you might see a little difference there when they merge them together. So that's available to look at. Uh, the topo layer is also uh, under the orthophoto uh, selection. You can turn that off and on again uh, from your selection box under your layers. Next, let's move down to other. Uh, um, has quite a few. If you're North Dakota, we do have a North Dakota sensitive layer. Uh, you turn that on, it shows, uh, uh, we'll turn off the ortho photo here. So you see these little blue dots here. Uh, we don't have much information on that other than that at this time. Uh, again, North Dakota is not part of Drift Watch or Field Watch um, at this point. Uh, but we do have that layer there for those in North Dakota. Um, next, um, we have added and combined some layers into a new category under other called H2O. And those are um, layers dealing with water. And um, again, that's under the H2O. I hit just a little plus sign and it'll expand out. First, we've got wetlands. So there's a wetland right there. You can see the wetlands along the ditches of the interstate. Uh, you can uh, change color and attributes. Um, you have watershed, but the watershed just basically gives you a um, outline and a code uh, for which watershed you're in. Uh, the Minnesota buffers uh, map is a specialty layer uh, for those in Minnesota. You probably know what that is. It shows you uh, waterways and streams, lakes, and it, it'll tell you um, how much buffer you need around them when applying. Uh, fertilizer app, uh, chemical. Um, <clears throat> next we'll move down outside the H2O and then we have our soils layer. Uh, soils layer uh, on the map uh, it just shows you your outline and your mu symbols, your mapping unit symbol or your number in the identifier. Uh, we do also have a soils form or map up here that you can create and we'll look at that. And then, of course, you got your major and minor roads uh, that you can control. We had turned the minor road off because it's also red. It could interfere with your drawing, but you can control those if you want those on or not on your mapping uh, page. That's fine. It does not affect the search uh, capabilities. Um, we're going to wait here, but let's talk a little bit about hail history. We do have the hail layer uh, available. Um, so let's let, give me a little, uh, bear with me here as I find a date that I know where we had some hail. Uh, so you can see it has every date going back, I believe, to January 1st, 2017 is when we started with the new 
uh, hail there. Um, so you can go in there and you can choose a date and you can see there's hail. Here's the legend. Uh, so your greens go from minimal, probably wasn't any hail, to here we got some dark purple, severe, so it definitely was hail in this area. Um, so you can look at that across a map a page with the hail. And you can also do a hail report based on that map. So you can create a hail report here for that date. Um, now our hail history map will allow you to pick an area of interest such as a field and it will give you the history. So um, again we'll look at that as we get into looking at maps and forms. Uh, con controlled counties, you can control township names, township range sections. And we also have in the program, um, we've added uh, quarter section and quarter quarter sections for identification purposes only. Uh, they are not official lines. So if you turn the quarter sections on, it will divide the section into the force and give you the uh, uh, quadrangle identification and then we go to another level and you can turn on quarter section quarters and do that. So if you need to find something uh, by legal this is just to help you find your way. Again those aren't official lines uh, they're just used for identification. Okay so let's uh, move on <clears throat> move on to uh, the forms itself. Um, but before that, let's uh, quick. I want to go over one thing in, in the surety program. Of course, you can have your uh, individual farms. Let's clear, I'll refresh this, and you have your individual farm extents. Show you your boundaries. Oh, I'm gonna turn my borders on here. Of course, <clears throat> but uh, sometimes you maybe want to export. <clears throat> those boundaries out of the system so we allow you to import but also export. The way you do that is you select the boundaries that you want to export. Um, you can do that quickly for example for a client because when you select the client it zooms out and you can just uh, select do the selection box and then with the selection box you can you can as a tool just like the zoom in you can select all within the box and then again when it's on the select tool you just hit left click hold and drag and that will select all under borders if you don't have a client selected uh, it'll ask you if you want to select uh, FSA boundaries if you have them turned on or uh, some other uh, maybe a custom layer and then once you have selected you would use the file export export client current map and gives you some options. You can export shapefile, you can give it a name, um, and it'll be saved to whatever your default uh, download folder is on your machine for that browser, or if you have it selected set to a uh, folder, uh, you can you can export the shapefiles within uh, the selected borders of the soils. <clears throat> you can create a georeference JPEG image that you could export a GeoTIFF and the KML. So you have the capability of exporting out of um, Surety and Surety Pro. Okay, now let's um, move on to the individual form. So I'm going to pick a uh, field here to work with. So I selected this field here. So let's look at some of the forms. Um, first, we're going to look at uh, first the maps. We're going to look at the crop history map. Again, related to the crop um, history uh, layer. Uh, so we open that up. It opens up uh, some information, but also then gives you four years of crop history, starting with the most current year it has available. You can change that. So if you wanted to start, for example, with 2016. You type in 2016 tab out and it'll reset these and rechange the map. Um, it has only a limited amount of uh, in, uh, ability to show uh, legend, so it's going to give you your most common, most common by area. Um, but now you can um, um, view this PDF and uh, save it, so on and so forth. You can also 
uh, change the outline of your field boundary. Um, so this before when I was talking about the ability direct PDF versus web when you create your forms and maps. Uh, if you go direct to PDF, you will lose some of these options here. Insurity Pro, Insurity, uh, especially Insurity Pro. And you, that's why you would want to make sure you have it selected to <coughs> um, a web-based map form. Let's move on to the, of course, we all know a uh, common one, FSA map. Gives you uh, the view that you have selected here. So if I zoomed out and say turned on the ortho photo uh, and I hit FSA map it'll show the FSA map now based on what I've selected and you don't have to you see my selected field has disappeared um, you notice that um, you don't have to have a boundary selected to do the FSA map uh, we'll do one little thing that you can do you can change the name up here if you wish before saving it or printing it. Next we'll look at overview map and that simply uh, uh, is the same as FSA except it turns it always turns the ortho photo off. Uh, so um, basically the same. <clears throat> Soil map well, this is where we give you options for soil properties for an individual field. Not only do we give you the outline and the mu symbols, we also uh, give you uh, descriptions. You can get acres, percent field, and you can add other properties uh, based on the soil map options, uh, such as productivity index and, and things of that nature. Of course, uh, some states have some different properties that you might want to look at. And then we, we default to the latest version but you can all go back in history and look at different versions of the soil uh, maps. Uh, topography map at this point we have basic simple uh, raster topography map that you can pull up and, and view. Uh, wetland map I don't think I got wetland oh I do have some wetlands on this area in this field so you show the wetlands in here and give you a list of them and the acres they encompass. <clears throat> And then we'll move on to the forms themselves. Um, uh, of course, we do have the uh, fertilizer form, as you can see here. Um, pretty straightforward um, on that. Um, and then we'll look at the uh, uh, chemical form. We'll do some work on the chemical form. And then, of course, you notice we've also added uh, another form called dicamba application. Let's take a look at that. So let's put up the chemical form. Now the uh, I had mentioned the prop, crop protection database. It's not live yet in this uh, product in this system yet. Uh, hopefully soon, but I'll show you uh, what it looks like in one of our test systems. Um, <clears throat> of course, we got the basic uh, information you can fill out. If you see an area, um, for example, a date, you can scroll and pick, uh, change dates. Um, owner operator. Uh, is controlled right here. It's also associated with your client list in Surety Pro. Uh, same list. Of course, you can, anywhere you see a little pencil means it's a drop-down box. You can create your products or your uh, fill-ins. Uh, and <clears throat> for example, crops. We don't have a, a default crop database. You create your own. At this point, we just uh, would add, hit the plus sign, give it a crop name save and you're ready to go. If you have a common one that you always want filled in right away because it's something you work on the most, you can always select as default and it will always uh, fill that in for you by default. Um, a quick fill over here available uh, is ability to see those areas in yellow. Um, once you fill those out, you can save it and if so, and then you can pull it up real fast and fill it in. For example, I got one set for uh, soybeans, Roundup, right? Roundup. Well, I didn't give the product name in there. It should have, but uh, I think I changed the product name. But anyway, uh, if you pull that up, it'll fill in the crop. It'll fill in your products here, rates, things of that nature. So if you're doing the same 
uh, you're going to do a lot of the same application with pretty much the same rate, same products, same crop. You can do a quick fill and fill that in. And you can create multiple quick fills to uh, use that. So it's an easy way of filling in a form. Um, for those in Surety Pro, uh, we have our status, which you can uh, uh, most default they have accepted, complete, and requested. I've added one called processing, which you can add into the status. It's outside the form, as you notice. Uh, this area that would not print, but it's a way of tracking a form. So you can give an attribute to a form. So if, if you want to track, kind of like work order tracking. It's used in the form manager. You can use that as a as a um, uh, filter. So that's the form chemical application form. Uh, and now let's look at the the new one, that Canva application form. And now this, due to lack of space, um, does not have all the features of the chemical form in it, or the chemical form will not have all these features because of restrictions and spaces. So probably for um, 2018 here, it's probably an additional form that you might want to fill out with your chemical form, if you wish, um, because we don't uh, have the ability to calculate uh, uh, for different products. Um, <clears throat> So uh, keep that in mind. Hopefully uh, by next year we'll be able to maybe combine these into one form. And so you have all the attributes of the chemical form along with the dicamba form. But this is based off the uh, uh, federal label, uh, best that we could define. Uh, so it has everything that's probably uh, required by the federal label. Uh, so um, again, you just would save this form again, uh, and it would show up. Uh, see, I don't think we put anything uh, required in there at this point. Um, well, I'm sorry. I should have saved the form. Uh, okay. Okay, there we go. I saved the form to system. I hit the wrong one there. So now, uh, as you'll see, uh, you can color code it, of course. If I come to my layers, there it is. Um, you can change the symbology. You can color by uh, different things, um, attributes. Um, change. You can show pins. You can change the default color if you wish here. You can also give it different labels, <clears throat> so on and so forth, to show on the map. So uh, that's a new form we've added into the system again. It doesn't replace the chemical form at this point. It's more made to be a complement to add with addition to the chemical form because of uh, space within the form itself. If you have any questions on that, give us, give us a call or drop me an email. I'm happy to talk to you about that. Let's look at some of the other forms here real quick. Um, you might be interested. Of course, there's the fertilizer form. We have a manure form. Um, this fertilizer, they ignore that. That doesn't show up on your uh, farm. We're looking at some other types of forms for fertilizer here in the future. And of course, anything you have, your sensitive areas, you can create your own sensitive layers uh, in, the, in, the, in the program itself. Um, so, and then any custom layers would show up here that you have created. And um, let's talk a little bit about custom layers here. Um, of course, I'm sure you uh, don't have the uh, capability, but if you're an admin in Surety Pro, of course you have the ability to run the forms designer, uh, but if it's a little bit more than you want to bite off, uh, we also have the form request, and this is also available to admin users, subscribers within uh, Surety also. So if you have multiple license, organization, multiple license, you would just need to work with the admin or you can call us directly and, and take care of that. Um, but this allows you to request the development of a custom form. And we've done quite a few custom forms. And uh, we can make changes for you. We can add things for you. And then if we uh, change those forms, uh, they become your form within your, within your organization. They're not shared with other people. Um, uh, this kind of gets the ball going to get us um, to contact you. Um, you can uh, 
tell what you would like to do. You can even give us an example of what you want to do by adding it here, uh, or you can contact us directly. You can contact myself, or you can just call us directly, and uh, we'll help you um, get that form changed for you. So let's move on to the uh, form manager. Uh, now this is strictly a uh, Surety Pro feature we'll be dealing with today. Uh, so let's let's take a look at that. Um, the form manager allows you any forms that you have saved in the system will allow you to manage those. Um, <clears throat> so let's take a look here. So you can manage by client. So if I have a client selected, it will default to client, but you can also manage by a location or a whole company. Okay, and you manage by year. Okay, and you can manage by the individual form. So I just want to see chemical, for example. So these are all my chemical forms for this location that were created in 2018. Um, I can choose what columns are available in the form. Uh, if you need to expand it out, you can. Um, we choose the columns here based on the form. These are the ones that will show up here. Uh, you can delete them, move them around by just grabbing them and moving them this way. Um, you could also then add other um, attributes. And if it's a numerical uh, column, you can click total this column. You may change it, hit save. So that's the order I put them in here. You can see this is a total numerical here under actual acres. Uh, you can sort these by ascending and descending. Um, <clears throat> you can show depending on how many pay records per page you want to show. Um, you can open a form directly from here. So as you see it's yellow, you click on it, it will open that form directly from here to make any changes. You would just make changes and hit save form and it will update. Uh, also on the form manager, you can uh, select a form here, for example, and zoom to results. So there's that form there, or excuse me, this one right here. Um, you can uh, select several and zoom to those results. You can also zoom to the individual result, uh, result right here. You can print the selected. You can delete forms from here. Uh, if you want to clear it up and, and, and only see the ones you have selected, you just use this tool right here. Uh, show pins means anything you select here. So if I uh, zoom to results here, you know it's got pins here. You can turn those off. You can also, um, on the individual form properties, layer properties, you can turn pins off and on. Um, one thing here would be export forms, and this is maybe where you can kind of use this to, uh, where you could use this if you have a job to do uh, multiple boundaries and you want to export a shapefile to your controller. I think most most controllers can take shapefiles or you can run them to their software to get them into the system. Uh, at this point, uh, I would recommend this. So you pick ones you want. Now when you export, it's going to export these attributes. So you could actually put one where you have the rate. You could put I have the product rate in here and you could export that. Of course the farm name, field name if you want, but you could export that uh, and it would take just the columns or you can take all at all columns and then you can export that as a shape file to give it a name and save it. And that's probably one you could bring into it would be probably be saved as a zip file. But you can bring that into your controller as a shape file and you'll have your boundaries. So when it says export forms, it also, in shapefile, it's your, your uh, outline of your form. Even if it's different than a boundary, um, it'll just show the outline. So a uh, few things there. Uh, we also got some additional filters here. So under each form, you, so you notice, remember we had the status. And so if I pick status, you can set up to filter by individual things within the status. And let's say I just want to see those that are complete. Those three, those are the three I have complete. Of course, you might have more. And again, this is by location. This isn't by the client. Uh, if I pick the individual client, 
and it's based on the client I have selected out here. So, oh, excuse me, uh, as you notice, I have Illic Farms. So it's only going to filter all those with Illic Farms. And you can see I have nothing uh, set or no forms associated with that uh, uh, farm at this point unless I choose all forms and then I do have well maybe I don't I don't have any associated there so well I got one I got one that cam application new one here so if I went like this it would sh show that so <clears throat> again these columns are based on what you've set set so once you set those columns uh, they'll set for that those forms so that's the uh, form manager. Uh, let's go back to location. So if you want to uh, print maps for, let's say, let's go back to our chemical. Uh, we came in, we're going to job to do. Um, we have these processing, which means that we're ready to go and uh, apply. You could come in, for example, pick your status, pick processing or uh, accepted or whatever you want to use. And it shows the two that I'm inter two that are available. I could select these two now. Let's say I want to. Uh, I could see where they are on the map. Also, uh, where are they showing up here? There they are. Now they might be a little farther apart than you usually used to, uh, but there's the two fields we want to apply. Um, and I want to do that job for the day now. Um, you could click on each individually in the, and print these or save them or email them. But we have another tool called uh, all Tools. Uh, the main tool is called the Dossier Studio. And then we use what we call Paradigm to set up that Dossier Studio. So you notice on the individual form here, at the end, we have something called Dossier Studio. Well, Dossier Studio allows you uh, to collect maps and forms. Okay? And uh, so this is Dossier Studio. I've add, added this map here. Okay. Now I could come in and uh, leave this open. I could come in to the f and I could click my next form here, or I could do it individually from the map itself in Dossier Studio. And it'll, as long as you got Dossier Studio open, it'll continue to add features. And let me get that one open here. Oh, I've lost it here. Let me find it here. I don't have his tabs. I apologize for that. Well, I should have tabs available. But anyway, to add Dossier Studio, and, and and you keep adding, and you can go into Dossier Studio and do some markups and create PDFs. What I'm going to do here, though, is show you how you can quickly create those maps of form. So I go to my paradigm, which you can customize, and, and if you need to learn how to do that, either we'll go through documentation or give us a call. But what I want to do is I want to do form manager view. I want the save form, which is what I have showing here. And I want the FSA map. Now if you want soil and top, we could do that or just the form manager view, for example. Um, but let's just do the form manager view, save form and FSA map. I click on that. And based on what I have selected here, oh, I'm going to have to find, here it is, my dossier studio here. Here it is. Nope, wrong one again. Here it is. Uh, so you can see I added all those. Let's start that over again here now that I have that. Let's hit paradigm again based on what I have selected. And it'll open up dossier studio and it'll start loading these forms and maps into the system. <clears throat> now unfortunately at this time we don't auto name uh, what these are, um, but we give you the capability to do that. So you could come in and put, uh, you know, a location or field ID for each of these. But you can see, put these in order. So now you have some opportunities to do things with that. Um, yeah, of course, export. You can export to PDF, then print them, or you can email uh, this as a PDF. So it's a group of uh, maps in forms all in one PDF. You could save this dossier uh, if you want to bring it up later. Unfortunately, at this time, either we can't we can't edit a form directly from the dossier at this point. Uh, something we we'll look at maybe in the future. You could also add some other. Uh, you could just add a um, 
blank page here if you want to. Uh, you can then mark up. So if there's a uh, something like you want them to enter in a different in a certain area, you could uh, uh, do markups here. Uh, add symbols. You can. Uh, text in the symbol itself we don't have a text tool yet we're looking at adding a text tool uh, but you can uh, come in look at the properties you could add text within it here if you need to put uh, for example where to enter in a field things of that nature and so um, that's what the dossier studio uh, does for you again you can have more information on that uh, within our documentation we got videos on it also but I just want to show that you can combine these things quickly <clears throat> and if you need to hand them off to people loading it or create load sheets things of that nature or people need to take to the field for application but your form manager manages all these forms and allows you to work with them again with the forms we have custom forms so you can create your own form based off of these or brand new form from scratch now last thing we're going to look at is uh, something else new coming hopefully within the next two, week or two to uh, the system and that's the crop protection database so as you notice uh, in the most forms <clears throat> excuse me um, get a field here you select a field you come in uh, you create uh, for example a chemical uh, form you know say in the certain areas you have to fill in uh, in the past uh, you have to create your own product list okay you would have to create it and enter it well now we'll be adding the crop protection database now this is in our test system so this isn't live yet so anywhere where a chemical product will need to select it chemical application form your aerial aerial GPA forms and dicamba form for now and maybe any custom forms that deal with chemicals and then also down the line if we add any other chemical related forms or you need to choose a chemical within a form you'll be able to pull up the um, crop protection database so in this case I've already added some so you would add it just like you would before you click on the pencil uh, this would be your grid view of your list and if you want to add a new product <clears throat> you clicked on here and then instead of create you can still create your own but then you can go and select a product from a crop protection database you can search so on and so forth once you found what you want okay you what you do is you just uh, <clears throat> you can number of uh, per page you can see we have 103 pages at 15 so um, if you get more say 30 we'll give you ability to scroll through it okay and if you want a certain product yeah, we'll just we'll just pick one here I'm not uh, saying so um, I'm just picking one here we're not going to pick any in particular um, oh we don't want that one well it doesn't matter you would uh, then add this product to the system you can also view the record if there's documentation here you can get uh, label you can get safety data sheets as PDFs for those products oh sorry I was too uh, click cap me here let's bring that up again <clears throat> and then when you add so if you want to add it to the system you would just hit the plus here you would fill in now it'll fill in what attributes we have you might have to fill in other information uh, this is a bad example it doesn't have an EPA uh, let's do something else here Let's just do 24D here. Let's do Winfield you know, 24D. So I'm going to add that. So it'll fill in the EPA number here, active ingredient. It'll fill in some of these other, whatever we have available. Some of them you might have to fill in yourself, like the REI. Um, you can view, again, view the product detail information here. You can get uh, labels and you can get uh, safety data sheets here. Now I can save that. Oh, 
something we require and we could probably change that if you don't need that so I've added in here so I got two of them okay so <clears throat> now I can come in and pick my products okay um, now also what you'll see is our little eye icon next to the product so anytime from the form you can click the eye and it'll bring up its information you can get label information and safety data sheets and so now you can create your own uh, product list from that chemical database and also access MSDS and label information from there so anywhere where we have products related to chemicals you'll be able to pull that information up so that'll be coming uh, soon and that's a surety that's a surety pro feature only um, so it's surety pro feature only so with that we'll finish up I want to talk a little about help and support here um, if you notice under the help uh, tools above the map you'll see support also if you uh, can access this through support on our main web page uh, so if we uh, click on our web page two clicks here to get to the same area here <clears throat> um, but uh, let's look at that right now this is our current uh, support page search so if we're going to do drawing for example or drawing tools uh, search you click you can search here just hit the two arrows next to it or the enter key give it some time uh, be patient with it it's searching all our documentation uh, kind of like a Google search uh, and it'll give you weighted uh, weighted scores so I did drawing probably just look at the first one right here as you can see you open that up drawing description how to video so not only drawing it has links to each individual tool also it goes through the process it'll throw in videos if we have them uh, so documentation through it so step by step so I take advantage of our documentation everything's in there uh, and of course then we also have uh, other um, <clears throat> videos we got how to videos here see all the different how to videos here um, again we have uh, within the support page we got other we got some quick links we got also tutorial videos here and then of course on our YouTube page and let's bring that back up again here as we finish things off here on our YouTube page our YouTube channel okay so again you go youtube.com search for AgriData you can subscribe so any new anything new would pop up as you turn on YouTube uh, but you can search again this webinar will be available other webinars there uh, that we saved uh, and then also help videos a whole slew of help videos to help you get you on your way most of them short and to the point um, and uh, very helpful so with that I thank you for uh, your attention today again if you have any questions please feel free to contact me or us here at AgriData on the screen is my email and my direct line um, and um, again if you have any questions on the crop protection database or uh, the dicamba form please let us know uh, and we're glad to help you out or answer your questions I'll leave this uh, slide up for a while but with that I, I thank you again for your time and have a good rest of your day.